this thing to record for YouTube. But okay, here we go. Okay, folks, so back from vacation two weeks. I just put my new points on here, new condenser, hooked up the old uh, regulator and rectifier. I kicked it over so I know this works. You'll see my little gas Coke bottle. There's another gas oil bottle down there. But uh, here, I'll let my son hold on video while I attempt to get this. You can hear it, the mufflers, the headers, everything's off, so it's loud as all get out, but uh, it sounds pretty good to me. So, rough carburetors aren't tuned, anything else, but we know our engine's good. So, happy camper. Okay, YouTubers, I uh, just wanted to give you a little look here at what I've been working on uh, last day or so. Took apart the uh, seat pan. Um, pretty easy thing to do. <coughs> the... Uh, Seat had some really decent sized rips, especially right along the curve here. Uh, and I was honestly just afraid it wasn't gonna hold up if I started sitting on it. I mean, it it looks good. Uh, a couple creases, you know, it's old vinyl. <clears throat> but uh, I opted uh, to just go ahead and, and take it apart. Here's the actual foam. The foam, actually, the top of it, uh, looks in fairly good shape. It's not brittle. Uh, the bottom uh, has got some brittle parts in it. You can see where the foam is starting to peel away. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is um, probably order off of uh, eBay or Amazon uh, a little upholstery foam. Um, <clears throat> get some uh, 3M spray, uh, you know, foam safe, kind of add maybe a layer down here at the bottom. Uh, I don't think I will recreate this cushion because there's no chunks missing out here. Uh, you can see a little bit here where the air, and this has got like a skin on it, and I can just kind of sand that skin off and it'll take it back down to this nice, you know, soft foam. Uh, so I think the foam I can pretty much save uh, for the most part. Uh, I'll order a reproduction uh, seat here. Uh, I'm looking to see, you know, which one's the best. Um, I don't want to get one too cheap, and I don't want to get one that's crazy expensive. Here's the original aluminum uh, trim. Uh, so that's all saved. I can put that back on. Uh, we've got some parts to spray uh, spray paint etc but that's the little project that I've got going on inside here is just to restore uh, that seat so let's take a look at what I've been doing outside I think you saw from my video uh, just a second ago uh, that I got her running so I know everything is working let's get this open up here uh, let's see, what did we do yesterday? We took the rear fender off, which is over here. Need to do some polishing on that and clean up a couple spots. Um, took the front uh, forks off the tree. Uh, those are going to need to be painted. I've got them over here. I'm trying to get all the bits and bobs that I'm going to need to paint black. Um, run together here. I've got my kickstand and center stand here in the Evapo Rust. Um, just kind of laid some uh, uh, paper towels across here so that it'll keep them wet overnight. I'll flip them over um, and let them sit another night. Uh, just trying to de rust those. Then I'll hit them with the wire wheel um, and then they'll be ready to probably prime and paint. Need to uh, sand all of these. I'm not going to take them down to bare metal. Uh, they really don't need it. 
uh, but I'm going to, you know, 220, 180, something like that. Uh, scuff them up, uh, hit the parts that have got a little bit of rust, which there aren't very many. Uh, let's see, the other thing I did here was on the console here. Uh, somebody had taken a pretty good fall uh, on this bike at one time or another. And there were some good, you could just see a little bit of the gouges right there next. But those gouges ran all the way across here. Uh, just some road rash. So, took my Dremel out, uh, polished that down as best as I could, uh, feathered it out. Um, then took the face place off. There were a couple high parts in here where mainly it was glue. Uh, and I hit them with the sanding wheel just to sand those out. There's a face plate that goes down over top of this. So a little bit of sanding. That'll be ready to hit with some paint. Um, here's my tree. I took the bearings out, the ball bearings. I've got them in a bag. Um, the races and everything look great. I, I don't think I need to put in new bearings. Um, and I got all the balls out of the uh, the run, so uh, I've got them in paper bags over there. Uh, let's see, cleaned up a lot. I had my tools everywhere. Oh, this is the big thing I did yesterday. This is that plastic piece. Um, that's goes actually on this side um, so we had just stripped it but it still had a lot of red on it uh, it had a lot of uh, really indentations from that uh, I used the scraper the plastic uh, putty knife to scrape this but it still left some pretty good dents so I've sanded that down with 80 grit uh, went around it with a uh, utility knife and try to get out some of the corners in there where I couldn't get out, uh, get in there with the sandpaper too well. But yeah, she sanded down to 80 grit right now. I uh, need to do 10 minutes at probably 120, 180, and then 220. Uh, and then she'll go over here with these, um, trying to get the parts uh, uh, put back together. Uh, so that all the parts I need painted will come in this area. I need to move that brake out of there. All the black parts will be there. I think in the next week or two, um, again, I just got back from vacation, so I've done this in, you know, I don't know, maybe five hours, uh, just over the last couple days. But uh, I'll uh, be ready next week or two, I'll be ready to get the the painted pieces will all be ready to hit um, before it gets too cold. It's almost October now, uh, so it's getting, you know, 60s, low 70s here in the Midwest. Uh, it's still very pleasant to work out in the garage. Um, what else have I done? I think that's the main thing. Um, really spent... Uh, the majority of my time, if you remember, I had problems getting the left and right hand point points. I'm trying to focus a little bit. So the left hand one goes underneath. There's a circle and it goes underneath. And then the right hand one, this metal one goes over top or vice versa. When I ordered it, first of all, I thought they came in a set. I only got one. Uh, so then I ordered another one. It showed up, and then I realized there's a difference between the left, and, and it's the base plate I'm talking about that the point's set on, between the left and the right. Can't find a left one here to save my life. Um, so I ended up reusing the base plate. I took the point off the right-hand one, the extra right-hand one I had, put it on here. Um, the diameter seems to be, I, I don't know if it's just tolerances uh, in the difference in the manufacturing, um, uh, but the diameter seems to be just a hair, like you can wiggle it, 
you can't hear when it's on there and it's under spring pressure, but if it were loose, the diameter around that shaft and the hold that holds that point on. Um, so I was a little worried about that, but it seems to work fine. Uh, put the new condenser on, uh, hooked up the wires to the right places down here. Um, and then I just put my, my gas and oil like I was showing you and kicked it over and she fired right up. So, uh, really, really super excited about that. Started cleaning down the frame uh, a little bit. I sprayed it down with some more degreaser. I'll probably do that again. There are a couple spots in here where there's just a hair of rust. Um, I think you can make that out a little bit. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, because I really don't want to take this motor out of here, is uh, just tape it off, uh, you know, tape off the engine, real simple to do. And uh, uh, just hit it uh, with some nice quality uh, spray paint. As a matter of fact, I got... I'm still not sure if this frame is gloss black or satin. It looks a little satiny now, but I think that's just because of age. Uh, but Duplicolor Acrylic Enamel uh, is a good one. Uh, this is, as you can see there, uh, gloss black. So I'll tape it off, um, sand it down a little bit, so this will have something to stick to. Just give it a spritz and kind of blend it in um, with the existing. Uh, there's some spots uh, down here. There's actually a screw that goes in there. So that's why you see the scratches around there. That's from the washer that screw sits on. Uh, so as your swing arm goes up and down, obviously it's going to affect that screw. Couple itty bitty strips back here. And, and really, like I'm saying, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit uh, with some sandpaper. And just, I think, hit it with this. Uh, and call it done. Um, for the most part, this frame is fabulous condition. Um, you know, no dings, no cracks, no significant rust. Uh, where I really feel like I need to strip it all the way down to the frame. Um, and then what I'll do, like I said, is I'll hit these parts. Uh, and again, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do it in the same color. Uh, I am a little bit torn because this is kind of a an acrylic enamel, like a, well, like what you use on your your tank or your car. And some of these parts, uh, like the kick stands, uh, the center stands, uh, you know, they can take a pounding. Um, so I'm looking at some stuff. Um, it's called VHT, roll bar and chassis. Um, it's significantly, I don't want to say it's thicker, but it's a tougher paint, obviously. Uh, it's not like a heat engine uh, paint, although I'm sure they make that. Uh, but I'm thinking about doing that, uh, these pieces out here in that uh, VHT, um, because they're going to take some beating and maybe do the frame that too. I don't know. I'm still going back and forth, as you can tell, uh, on what to do. Uh, but yeah, she's coming along, frames all torn down here. Um, I mean, as far as I think I'm going to take it. Um, she kicks over, she starts. Uh, still need to, you know, set the carbs. Uh, my wires are run, but obviously there's no handlebars or anything, so uh, you don't have the synchronization of the carbs because the wires are loose. Um, so I'll be syncing that. That'll make it run smooth, you know, when I tune it up after I get the wheels and everything else on. But right now I'm at the point where I, I need to just start doing um, a lot of prep work. Oh, I did, uh, I finished my forks. So my forks are done, the seals are on, new caps are in. Uh, just use 10W30 uh, oil. They take uh, 4.9 ounces uh, per fork uh, for this particular bike. Uh, so they cleaned up really, really nice. 
uh, real happy with those. Uh, so they're ready to go. But yeah, sanding, getting that ready to paint. I've got a lot of cleanup to do like on the inside. It's not stuff you'd normally see, but I want to clean it because I've got it off the bike. Uh, and otherwise it's going to start rusting from the inside out. Um, I've got some more as I transition over to daylight here. Got some more, uh, you know, now that I've got this off the bike, you can see I can actually clean there. There was a bar that went across there, so I couldn't really get in there. So I got some more cleaning to do here. Ugh. That fall. If you look down here, again, it just good general cleaning. Got a lot of, uh, you know, polish. Uh, that kind of arm work. Still need to polish the back wheel here. Um, the tubes and the treads and everything look great. They hold air, but uh, uh, I have to at least put in new tubes. Well, I wouldn't trust those. The, uh, the tires are great. Everything was kept inside. Uh, there's no rod on those tires at all. Um, so I think that's about it uh, since we got back from our trip. Uh, again, cleaned up the garage. Just got all my tools back where I know where they are uh, back there. And uh, over the next couple weeks, I think you'll probably not see a lot go on or off the bike. Uh, it's just going to be more, you know, spray painting and sanding, spray painting and sanding, spray painting and sanding. Uh, but thanks for watching guys and uh, keep in tune here uh, for more in the coming weeks. Thanks.